Hello everyone and welcome to my deep dive on God of War. Today we'll be doing everything we can to get God of War running well on the deck. We have our work cut out for us considering that it has a major memory leak which causes crashes and can barely maintain 40 frames while looking like your screen is on the other side of a fish tank. I don't have any news today, so let's get right into talking about the game. As mentioned before, God of War uses a very aggressive preset out of the box, and it looks pretty bad. In addition, it doesn't perform very well, and will crash within an hour of game boot when using the low preset. Using the ultra preset lowers the time to crash to 10-15 to 15 minutes, which sounds suspiciously like a memory leak. If you like the content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, mail me a letter, go to work, and eat an apple pie. It's crazy what YouTube expects from people nowadays, but it helps me out a lot. As usual, here's the timestamp for my recommended settings. I recommend watching to see the actual process and how I arrive at my conclusions, though. With that out of the way, let's move on to test methodology. The tests were all done with the following configuration. A 512GB Q3 Steam Deck, SteamOS 3.3.2, DXVK 1.10.3 slash 1.3.211, Proton 7.0-4, Mesa 22.2.0, and God of War 1.0.12. The tests were done in the Sea of Nine. It involved sailing from the Temple to the Cliffs of the Raven, completing the spirit's request, then immediately sailing to Stone Falls and fighting the Revenant there. The testing included a good variety of close and long-range views, several atmospheric effects, rapid asset swaps, and intense action with dense particle effects. Alright, let's move on to grabbing a baseline. Here we can see that performance isn't exactly as we'd expect. Low performs slightly better than the default options, and actually looks better in my opinion, since any detail gained with the default's higher settings are lost to the FSR being set to ultra performance. I'd also like to point out that despite the default option using the settings marked original, it actually performed worse than original at native resolution. Overall, I'm not quite sure how the default settings were chosen, but they don't seem to favor fidelity or smooth gameplay, and end up in a weird, bad at both situation. Looking at the rest of the graph, we can see that high settings are technically playable most of the time, and ultra is unplayable at all times, even causing the menu to freeze up prior to loading into game. Moving into a time series graph, we can see that even during comm segments there are wild variations, with the frame rate being incredibly unpredictable. Moving into finding a bottleneck, and we can immediately see a potential issue. The CPU is working incredibly hard on all cores just to keep the game going. Ultra used much less, likely because the GPU is the bottleneck there. One thing is clear, we need to give the CPU a bit of breathing room. On that note, the CPU is getting uncomfortably hot. At one point on the default preset, hitting 94C before backing off, likely due to the extra stress of FSR. The GPU is also very stressed, but only really maxed out on Ultra and being close on High. Default is the only outlier with dips into the 70% usage range, or 1100 MHz. But I'm not sure that punishing the already bottlenecked CPU more is worth the trade-off. The GPU is also boiling. I know Steam is made by boiling water, but maybe Santa Monica Studios is taking it a little literally. Jokes aside, even on the default settings with the GPU having less work, the GPU is hotter. I'm going to assume that it's because the GPU and CPU share the same package and the deck simply can't exhaust quickly enough. I briefly tested with fans at 100% and the issue persisted, so we seem to be running into a fundamental heat transfer issue that needs to be solved by lightening the load. Remember how I mentioned this game crashing? Even getting to the Lake of Nine in the early game had three hard crashes that forced a reboot of the entire deck, and that was on the lowest settings. Here we can see exactly why that was. There's a horrible memory leak. Over the course of the 142nd benchmark, the memory usage on the high preset went from 10.5GB up to 12.8GB, and Ultra went from 10.5GB all the way up to 14 
the game ended up crashing about 30 seconds after the benchmark was complete on Ultra, being roughly 6 minutes after booting to the main menu. Knowing this is an issue, let's try to fix the crashing first, and then worry about the performance afterwards. No sense in getting a smooth frame rate if you lose your progress every few minutes. If you don't know what swap, swappiness, or the VRAM fixes I'm going to mention are, then please check out my previous video, Easy and Safe Health and Performance Boosts, linked on screen and in the description below. First, I wanted to see if raising the VRAM to a 4GB minimum would help. The 0.1% lows on the low preset were 42% better, but the 0.1% lows on high were 11% lower. In addition, the game still crashed, so let's move on to testing swap. As mentioned, next I tried to test the swap fixes in isolation, setting the swap file to 16GB and the swappiness to 1 using Cryo Utilities. First, I wanted to see if it affected performance at all, and it did. The low preset was within margin of error, but the high preset took a 28% hit to the 0.1% lows. Next, I wanted to check if the crashing was fixed, and the good news is that it was. Trying to save a long-running benchmark log kept failing, but I can confidently say that I haven't experienced a crash since implementing the swap fixes. Memory still crawls up at the default rate as seen in this graph, but it eventually stalls out around 15GB of RAM and 7.5GB of VRAM used on all presets. With the crashing out of the way, we can move on to performance. Now utilizing both the swap fixes and the VRAM increase, we can see that on the low preset we get a 4% boost to 1% lows and a 27% boost to 0.1% lows. On the high preset we got a 12% boost to 1% lows, but everything else was within margin of error. Since these results were the best we have and the only ones that don't crash without a major performance hit on all presets, I'll be using them as a baseline going forward. Let's see if we can give the hardware a little more breathing room and gain some performance in the process. The first thing I did was try lowering the CPU temperatures by having more power go to the GPU, which I did by pinning the GPU at 1600 MHz. Unfortunately, every preset and every metric suffered except for the 97th percentile on high, so GPU pinning won't be helping us gain any performance today. For the next round of testing, I wanted to try a mod that was recommended to me the DXVK Vulkan mod. In theory, it could improve our frame rates by moving the DXVK process a little earlier in the pipeline. The install process for this mod is incredibly simple. Go to the mod page, link in the description, then download the mod. I used version 0.0.8 since the latest version of 0.1.0 didn't work for me and several others in the forums. Open the mod archive in your downloads folder, Extract the two DLL files into the God of War installation folder, and extract the dxvk.conf in the async folder into the God of War installation folder as well. That's it. It's nice to have a simple installation once in a while. With that out of the way, let's see the results. As we can see, the lows are slightly lower on the low preset, and everything else is within margin of error. I also confirmed that there were no meaningful changes to any other metrics, so Proton's implementation of DXVK must have gotten better since the mod was recommended to me. Overall, the mod wasn't as effective as I'd hoped, so let's move on. Let's do something else new to try to get a bit more performance. Huge pages. Huge pages are pretty simple to understand. By default, most computers, including the DEC, allocate memory in 4 kilobyte chunks called pages. Every time you look up a page, it takes a little more time. This means that allocating 1 gigabyte of memory uses 262,144 pages, which is a lot of overhead. Huge Pages lets the deck allocate pages up to 1 gigabyte in size, meaning that 1 gigabyte of memory would use one page instead of over 262,000. In a game like God of War, where memory is almost constantly maxed out, this can be pretty significant time savings. Using huge pages is super easy. All you need to do is download the System Toolbox plugin in Decky. After the plugin is installed, go to the System Toolbox section in the Decky overlay and toggle the Huge Pages option on. That's it, we're done. Let's see if it bought us any performance. Here we can see that the 0.1% lows on the low preset got a 10% boost, and the 0.1% lows on the high preset got a 13% boost. 
The differences are pretty minimal, and mostly in the 0.1% lows, so huge pages don't make the largest difference in the world, at least not here where the CPU is the bottleneck. That said, these were our best results yet, so I'm going to use them as a baseline going forward. Lastly, I wanted to test out FSR. I used a resolution of 960 by 600 and used the FSR balanced option in-game. As we can see, we lost a bit on the lows of the low preset, likely because the CPU is already very stressed, but we gained an additional 14% to averages and 18% to 97th percentile results. High became almost playable, finally beating 30 FPS on averages. Overall, it got a 14% boost to averages, 11% boost to 97th percentile, 14% boost to 1% lows, and the 0.1% lows were within margin of error. It's pretty clear that we'll need FSR to get the best performance possible in some of our presets. Before leaving the benchmark section, I wanted to show where our testing led us by comparing our best results with the baseline. As you can see, there wasn't any night and day performance difference here, but the low preset in particular became much smoother. At the same time, we managed to solve the crashing issue without taking a hit to performance. And since being able to actually play games is the point of the deck, I'll classify that as a win. As usual, here's a list of things I tried but didn't do any good. ZRAM and ZSwap had identical performance. CPU pinning at 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5 GHz had worse performance. GPU pinning at 800, 1000, 1200, 1300, 1400, and 1500 MHz had worse performance. Disabling 2, 4, and 6 CPU cores had worse performance. Disabling SMT had worse performance. Fan curve tuning and setting the fan to 100% had identical performance. I used a custom DXVK mod config, and that had worse to identical performance. And using GE Proton and DXVK Async led to identical performance. With all that testing out of the way, I felt confident enough to make some presets. Unfortunately, God of War suffers from many of the same issues as Horizon Zero Dawn, poor optimization. As a result, getting locked presets is almost impossible, even the lowest settings with a tiny resolution will dip below 30 at times. I've decided to go with a 95 to 5 rule on this game. As long as 95% of the frames are locked, 5% being below locked is acceptable. This isn't usually how I create the presets, but there's just no way around it here. First up is the battery saver preset. Here, I tried to get as close as possible to a locked 30 FPS, while also keeping the battery usage low. If you want your deck to last long enough to avoid watching that Peppa Pig marathon your kid is watching right now, then use these settings. In BIOS, use 4GB of VRAM. In Cryo Utilities, use a 16GB swap file, and swappiness set to 1. In Game, use a resolution of 960 by 600 limit to 30 fps, use the low preset, set fsr to quality, in the deck overlay, set the refresh rate to 60 hertz, and a tdp limit of 7 watts. The total playtime for this preset was 2 hours and 25 minutes. Next up is the smooth preset, where I try to get as close to a locked 60 as possible. Unfortunately, that's just not in the cards for God of War but we can get a mid-50s a respectable amount of the time. If you want your experience to be as smooth as glandular secretions of the Bombix Mori, then use these settings. In BIOS, use 4GB of VRAM. In Cryo Utilities, use a 16GB swap file and swappiness set to 1. In Game, use a resolution of 960x600. Limit to 60fps. Use the low preset and set FSR to Performance. In the Deck Overlay, set Refresh Rate to 60Hz. In the System Toolbox Decky plugin, enable Huge Pages. This preset got me a total playtime of 1 hour and 42 minutes. Next up is the recommended preset, where I try to get as close to a locked 40 as possible, and with the exception of asset swaps and some extremely dense combat scenarios, achieved. If you want your gameplay to be as close to a PlayStation 4.5 as possible, then use these settings. In BIOS, use 4GB of VRAM. 
in Cryo Utilities, use a 16 gigabyte swap file and swappiness of one. In game, use the native resolution, limit to 40 FPS, and use a custom preset with the following options. High texture quality, original model quality, low anisotropic filtering, low shadows, disable reflections, low atmospherics, and disable ambient occlusion. In the deck overlay, set the refresh rate to 40 Hz. In the system toolbox decky plugin, enable huge pages. With this preset, I got a total playtime of 1 hour and 40 minutes. Last up is the prettiest preset, where I try to get a locked 30 with the best graphics. I actually think this will be how most people choose to play, since it's pretty rock solid and ends up being very similar to the original experience on PS4. If you miss the PSP or PS Vita and want to play Sony games on the go, console style, then use these settings. In BIOS, use 4GB of VRAM. In Cryo Utilities, use a 16GB swap file and swappiness of 1. In game, use the native resolution, limit to 30 FPS, and use a custom preset with the following options high texture quality, original model quality, original anisotropic filtering, low shadows, original reflections, low atmospherics, and original ambient occlusion. In the deck overlay, use a refresh rate of 60 Hz. In the system toolbox decky plugin, enable huge pages. This preset gave me a total playtime of 1 hour and 34 minutes. Now that the preset section is over with, I wanted to take a moment to show you a website that you may not know of. SteamDeckHQ.com is a great site that I read pretty consistently, which is why I was very happy when the creator reached out and asked me if I wanted a key for God of War. I wasn't asked to say anything in particular about the site, and I only received a key to God of War, which I've already beaten as payment, but I wanted to be fully transparent with you. As I mentioned before, I already read their coverage several times a week, so recommending them comes very easy to me. In particular, I find that their game coverage usually details some good starter settings. In the event that I haven't gone over a game yet, if you want to know how a game performs on Steam Deck, or even if you just want to grab some quick deck news, then I can definitely recommend going and checking out SteamDeckHQ.com. As always, the link is in the description below. Alright guys, well that's it. We managed to get some decent presets and stable performance out of a game that crashed consistently, so I'm pretty happy with the outcome, and I think that you can really enjoy a full playthrough of Kratos and Atreus' adventure this way. If you liked the content and want to support me on Patreon, then feel free to check out the extensive list of benefits over at patreon.com slash cryobite33. The link is in the description below. As always, please like the video to show that you like the likelihood of another video likely about a game that people like. Comment your very best boy below and tell Atreus to stop getting sidetracked. Subscribe and help me push past the 10,000 subs mark. There's no joke here, but I never thought I'd get this far and it's been a dream for years to get a play button at 100k. Ring the bell to be reminded that I exist, but only when I do. Thanks to all of my patrons who support me in making content like this every day after work. Verge4469, Mitch, a zero fail, Frankie Odgers, Pronesis, Lemon, Brian D, Yi Luo, Pi K, Madam Slug, Spiffman, Bradley C, The Duck, Jean Cris, Jimmy Champagne, Christopher Comer, Keenan Brody, Mario Diaz, Chase Melancron, DevOps D. Adams, Larry, Nathan Wilk, Rafaniak ZX, and Aiden. For YouTube channel members, we have VV, Eugene Brednev, and Prashid Shah. And lastly, Cryptus Primero, who donated to the channel with a super thanks. Thank you to everyone for watching, and have a great day.